Hey everyone, welcome back to Behind the Spacebar. This is episode 15, five things you need to use multi-tracks. Uh, Behind the Spacebar is a podcast for playback techs, musicians, music directors, really anyone performing on stage with Ableton Live. If that's you, you're in the right place. If this is your first time, I'm so glad you're here. If you're a return visitor, a return listener, then welcome back and uh, glad to have you as well. Today, we're going to do a little bit of a crossover. Uh, if you are not familiar, uh, I release a brand new tutorial every single day, 10 a.m. Central. And you probably figured out now each day is slightly themed. Uh, I'm starting a brand new series on Saturdays with my gear theme. So Saturday's gear focus because everybody loves gear where I want to walk through individually um, some tips, some suggestions on how to choose the right gear. But I thought before I do that, I need to talk about the five things you need to use multi-track. So this is something I've been teaching for many, many years as kind of a framework, a structure to decide what you need in order to make this happen. But I thought this is more podcast than it is gear related. Yes, it's all about gear, but it would make a lot of sense on behind the space bar. So we're doing a bit of a crossover. This is like, uh, you know, when um, people from Parks and Rec would be on the office or the office would be on Parks and Rec or whatever, which they literally were different people. But you know what I mean? Like back in the day, friends and people would come together. Uh, every time I turn on like CBS, which is very rare other than to watch a football game uh, or um, uh, Fox or whatever, they're like, you know, the ER people and the police people and this people from all the FBI shows and the CIA and the NCIS and the whatever people are all coming together for a giant whatever crossover episode. That's what's happening today. So today we're going to talk about the five things you need to use uh, multi-tracks. Um, but then um, uh, starting this Saturday and every other Saturday, we're going to really break down each piece of that and dive in deeper. So today will be a bit of an overview episode. I don't want to dive super deep because we're going to dive deep on those uh, tutorials on Saturday. So I'll link to those as they release um, uh, to the show notes, but I'll link to just our gear playlist so you can find that as it releases. Okay. So let's talk about the five things you need to use multi-tracks. Multi -tracks. Um, this is even really like to use clicks and stuff like the same kind of concept. These are the five things you need. So number one at the top is a computer and you're going, well, will duh, like, wow, you know, real, real, um, strong, um, smart thing you mentioned there is that we need a computer. What computer do you need? Now I always talk about when I get into this conversation, I'm a bit biased because I am a Mac guy. I'm an Apple guy. Um, I have a couple, uh, I say a couple, that sounds like I'm swimming in money. I bought these little like mini $99 uh, uh, Windows computers that are way underpowered, but I bought it really to try to like, you know, be a man of the people to understand how to use Windows. And I, that's just not a system I used often. So um, I can't give lots of recommendations for Windows computers uh, as, as far as what to use. I'm more of a Mac guy and we'll talk about this more in the computer episode, but I did think the one thing I should share here here is a good place to start is a live's minimum system requirement. So you can go there and see, okay, for live 11, this is what you need for live 10. This is what you need kind of the minimum versions of this. Uh, and then you can go and buy a computer based on that, which is super great. Again, we'll talk more about this in the, um, uh, kind of computer choosing a computer, uh, episode, uh, uh over on, uh, on Saturdays on the YouTube channel. Uh, starting this Saturday. Uh, again, if you want to check that out, uh, I've included a link to head over to the YouTube channel to subscribe, check out that content. Um, here's I'll say as a general concept, we'll dive deeper on Saturday. We live in an amazing time where at least on the Mac side, any Mac that you buy that's an Intel, uh, that's a, a Apple Silicon Mac, meaning M1 Mac or higher now. We have what now? M1 Mac. Uh, we have an M1. We have M1 Ultra, M1 max, right? I think I've got that, that progression, right? Um, any of those that you buy is going to be plenty fast to run tracks. It's, it's an amazing time for computers. Uh, it's powerful. It's better than the weird period where we didn't know, you know, everyone said Apple doesn't care about pro users anymore. I think we're beyond that. Uh, they're iterating, they're releasing some new stuff at the time of recording this. The Mac studio has just come out. Um, really, really amazing time for computers. So I'll say generally from an Apple perspective, almost anything you buy is going to be great from a windows perspective. There, there really is a myriad of options available, which is why I, I try not to like, uh, you know, offer a lot of suggestions because I don't have much to say in that space. But I will say uh, as a good kind of reference point is follow those minimum system requirements there uh, on Ableton site. And anything above that is, is going to be pretty good. And nice thing on Windows is, again, you have lots of different options. Um, you can buy a, buy a computer that's plenty competent and that's going to work really, really well. OK, so number one, we have to have our computer. Number two is we have to have Ableton Live. we got to decide what version of Ableton Live. Now, I have walked through recently same uh, tutorial series on Saturday. I walked through the three editions of Ableton Live and kind of asked the question, 
What edition of Ableton Live do you need to use tracks? I'll link to that episode, but as a quick refresher, essentially, uh, if you're just getting started with Live, then get Ableton Lite. You know, if you buy a piece of hardware, software, often it'll come with Ableton Lite. Start there. Figure out if it works for you, if you like the interface, if you like the way it works, the workflow, if it does, great. Uh, if it works for you, then upgrade to Ableton Live Intro. Figure out, does this work? I'm still committed. I like recording. I like doing MIDI. If it does, then go to Ableton Live Standard. Here's where I want to pause. If you're just using tracks, if you're just going to run click tracks live, that's kind of your thing. Uh, standard is, is plenty. It, it removes the limitations that exist in intro, um, particularly the limitations that are prohibitive to you using tracks fully, which is like track count, uh, number of scenes, those sorts of things. Uh, so standard is the what you need for running tracks. So I, I would like you to eventually get to standard, at least standard. Okay, we'll dive deeper in the, the, the gear episodes of that. And I'll link to the previous episode where we kind of uh, dove deep on Ableton Live there. Um, but um, version of Ableton Live standard, if you're gonna you wanna use uh, Max for Live to, to use some cool plugins, Strange Electronic, uh, Taz, uh, Strange Electronic Setlist, Taz Lite, Taz Pro, uh, you wanna use Able Set, you wanna use uh, Leo's timecode reader, uh, Leo who makes uh, uh, Able Set, then you're gonna need Max for Live. And if you're gonna do that, get Ableton Live Suite. So I would suggest standard, but you could also upgrade to Suite uh, just for Max for Live because there's some great, cool, really uh, additional utilities and things you can get there. Um, again, I'll link to some extra content there. So number one, we have to have a computer. Uh, it has to meet Ableton's minimum system requirements. Number two, uh, we have to have a version of Ableton Live. I would suggest standard. Start with intro, upgrade up to, to, to standard for sure. Number three, we have to have an audio interface. We have to get a, 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 have a way to get audio out of our computer. Now, I have talked many, many times before. Again, I'll link to videos here. Again, this is crossover. We're combining all the episodes and the content. Uh, about audio interfaces, my suggestions, top five audio interfaces. I've linked audio interfaces uh, all under a certain dollar value, you know, $5.99. I think we did $3.99. I'll link to all that content before. Um, here's the the couple things, though, and we've talked about this plenty times before. Uh, when it comes to an audio interface, focus on outputs more than inputs. For live performance, focus on outputs more than inputs, okay? Um, audio interface, don't buy a two-channel interface. Again, I'll link to all this content. Don't buy a two-channel interface. If you're going to do a two-channel interface, uh, I don't think I have the cable next to me to show you, but uh, buy just the Hosa CMP 153 or 159. Um, I've got literally videos showing you how to connect that to your computer to then route that to your soundboard. I have an entire course showing you how to get audio out of your computer. If you're going to buy a two channel interface, just buy a Hosa CMP 153 or 159 and call it a day. Buy four channels or more if you're getting an audio interface. Um, you want to have separate outputs. You want to try to get to where you can have stereo tracks and then you want to be able to split and have multiple outputs. Um, and if you can't afford that at the moment, then just do Hosa CMP 153. 159. Watch the videos I've linked in the show notes of this episode um, in the description of this if you're watching on YouTube uh, and follow my suggestions there. So number one, we have to have a computer. Number two, we have to have a version of Ableton Live. I would say at least standard upgrade to suite if you're using Max for Live. Number three, we have to have an audio interface or if we're doing two outputs, a Hosa CMP 153-159. Number four, we don't want to look like we're checking our email on stage and so we need to have a MIDI controller. Again, I've done more videos than I can count on best MIDI controller shootouts based on type, based on scenarios. I'll link to all of those. All I want to say here is choose a MIDI controller that uh, that ties in to what you play, how you're going to interact with tracks. If you're just a playback tech side of stage, this matters. Uh, I want to say it matters less, but like that's your whole thing. So find the best MIDI controller that works for you for that. But if you're a guitar player, don't buy a MIDI controller that requires the use of your hands. Um, I mean, I guess you could if you're going to just do stuff in between, but if you need to like repeat, it makes way more sense to buy a foot controller, right? It, it makes way more sense to buy a, a Oakboard Mini. There it is. Ooh, there we go. It's hard to point uh, when you're seeing things in reverse. Uh, Oakboard Mini by Oaktone. Uh, buy a, um, a Looptimus by Loop Community. Like whatever... Uh, works best for you. Buy a foot controller if you're if your you know hands are busy while you're playing or whatever. Um, find something that fits you. As a drummer, buy a, a drum pad. We actually had probably one of the best discussions and comment kind of I'm gonna say shootout, but people giving a lot of feedback was my 
uh, I, I think I did five best uh, drum pad controllers for drummers. And uh, I had some really, really great comments. And comments on YouTube aren't always great, uh, but some really great comments from drummers giving their suggestions, what they liked, why they didn't like this one pad controller, why they, there was kind of a consensus on one, which I'm still pushing that one because I, I think it's still great in the price point. But um, check out all those videos. I'm, I'm going on longer than I meant to or longer than I should. But I, I say all that to say, uh, check out all those videos. Find a MIDI controller that fits your vibe because the goal of having a MIDI controller is um, uh, to stay focused on the music, to stay in the music, to stay present in the music and not be staring at a computer screen the whole time. Like uh, we don't want to be looking like we're checking our email on stage, hunched over our laptop typing. Um, so we want a MIDI controller so we can move our laptop to the side and interact with our laptop uh, using a MIDI controller. So number one, we have to have a computer. Uh, find something that meets lives minimum system requirements. If you're looking on the Mac side, that's basically any M1 Mac, which is great. Uh, number two, we have to have the the right uh, addition of Ableton Live. If you're looking to use tracks, you got to use standard. Uh, you can start with intro. You can start with light to figure out if it works for you, but then upgrade to standard. And if you want to use Max for Live and additional devices, buy Ableton Live. Sweet. Number three, we have to have an audio interface. We have to at least get two outputs out of our computer. If we're going to do that using the headphone output, if we're going to do just two, you know, just click and guide and just tracks, get a Hosa CMP 153, 159, skip the interface. But best case scenario is to get an audio interface, focus on outputs, get an audio interface with at least four or more outputs, right? I've got a shootout of a gazillion different things. Number four, we need to choose a MIDI controller uh, because a MIDI controller is going to allow us to not look like we're checking our email on stage, going to give us control over Ableton Live, uh, and we want to find something that fits our scenario. Uh, and then number five, and finally, and this is maybe the most important piece of this. If you're going to use tracks uh, on stage, if you're going to use click on stage, then you need to find this. These are in-ears. So choose uh, a good proper pair of in-ears. Uh, I personally suggest and really enjoy and like all clear in-ears and full disclosure. Uh, I've worked with them in the past. I got these in-ears for free in exchange for doing some promotion. Um, but even if I didn't get these for free, uh, these are still my favorite. I like All Clear as a company. They have a wide variety of price points. Uh, they have custom in ears. They've their universal in ears are really really great, and they have fantastic customer support. Um, in ears is essential. In fact, I had someone the other day, uh, a buddy of mine, Andrew, call me and say, "Hey, do you think it's possible to use tracks without in ears?" And I said. Yeah, no, it's not. And he said, well, what if the drummer is just hearing click? Like, it's impossible to use tracks without click. I think we all agree on that. Uh, although some people try to do it. It's a mess. Don't do it. it it's an absolute disaster. But then some people uh, go, well, I'll just have the drummer have click and I won't let anyone else hear click. Uh, everyone else can use wedges, but the drummer has to have in ears or have at least one ear in to hear click and everyone else plays to it. Uh, that's a terrible experience for the drummer. Absolutely terrible experience for the drummer. You you lose the, the fun stuff of using a click. Great transitions. I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll talk about this in the gear episode, Saturday, 10 a.m. Central, uh, over on the, the gear side of play of, uh, uh YouTube, uh, on our playlist there. But, um, you gotta have in-ears. If you're going to use tracks, you gotta use click and you've got to use in-ears. That's absolutely essential. So, um, uh, find, I would suggest a good pair of custom in-ears. I really like all clear. What I would suggest with people is fine. Uh, again, I'm going into content that's going to be on that episode of the the, the gear show. But uh, I always tell people uh, find the the set of in ears that has the amount of drivers that works for you for your instrumentation. Uh, find your price point. What's the price point you're looking in? And if you get between a couple different companies, Ultimate Ears, uh, All Clear, um, uh, I blanking a uh, West tone, you know, we got three companies all, you know, let's find a product that's similarly priced. Um, you know, whatever, ask around, ask what people say, you're going to do customs. They're similar price point. Here's what I say, email or call the company and whoever gets back to you the fastest, that's who you go with. Cause you're going to get to a certain point where they start to get similar in price. I think all clear tends to be a more affordable in ear for the same quality typically is what I've seen is another reason why I like them. Again, I, I'm biased because I have their in-ears. I have friends that work there. I think they make great products. I've worked with them in the past. So there is a bias there. I understand that. But um, I would say you get to that point where you line them up, call them, email them, whoever gets back to you first, gives you the best customer service experience, go with them. Okay. So five things you need to use multi-tracks. Number one, computer. 
Um, if you're looking for a Mac, just buy any Apple computer and you're going to be there. Number two, um, you need a version of Ableton Live. I would at least suggest standard if you're using tracks. Number three, an audio interface that's at least four outputs or more. If you can't afford that, you don't want to do that, then it hoses CMP 153 or 159. Uh, number four, you need a MIDI controller and a MIDI controller that fits your vibe, that fits what you're playing, that makes sense. And then finally, number five, uh, you need in-ears. Custom in-ears, if at all possible. Uh, find uh, the best price point, the best driver count for your instrumentation. Uh, and then worst case, call the company when you line them up to decide there. Now, the sixth kind of bonus thing that I want to encourage you, if you're running tracks that you need to use multi-tracks, uh, to use click, really to, to use tracks or click on stage, is uh, you need to head to from studiotastage.com slash free because I have a bunch of free resources from clicks to guide cues uh, to my gear list. That's a huge one. Um, if you want my suggestions on gear all in one place, instead of having to watch a bunch of different videos, then you can get that by heading to from studiotastage.com slash free. Um, you'll see all my resources from my gear guide to clicks to guides to even time code files. And this is $100, over hundreds of dollars worth of resources that were created from resources that I sell that cost hundreds of dollars. You get them for free just by adding your name or email uh, on the site there. So head to from studiosage.com slash free to get that. And then finally, if you want to continue this conversation as I walk through each one of these gifts, suggestions, and tips on computers, versions of live, audio interface, mini controllers, and ears, um, then you need to head to the YouTube channel and do two things. Number one, subscribe. I included a link below in the show notes to do that. And then number two, uh, after you subscribe, uh, you need to hit the bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video. And I post new stuff every single day. So you'll get a notification on your phone. You'll go, eh, I'm not interested. Skip it. The next day, see, oh, I'm very interested in that. Click through. You can watch it. And if you happen to watch it 10 a.m. Central, you can join in on the premiere and chat with people, folks worldwide that are watching and listening at the same time. Thanks so much for joining everyone. This is super fun. Again, make sure to go subscribe to YouTube so you follow up on this series as we do kind of our uh, From Studio Stage crossover event. Uh, and with that, I'll see you on the YouTube channel on Saturday and then I'll see you back next Monday here at 10 a.m. Central. Take care, everybody. Bye.